Hello guys, this is Joe speaking, welcome to LJP Speed React, episode 331, and today we're reacting to the Perfectly Purple Podcast, episode 4, Ken Selena Gomez, Remember the Lyrics, and more. Now, I haven't done this in a while, so let's uh, say I checked off my LJP React list to begin with, so... Let's go and go ahead and just react to this in five, four, three, two, one, go. From the world of imagination, this is the Perfectly Purple Podcast. Okay. A podcast dedicated to everyone's favorite purple dinosaur. Who first charmed our hearts in 1988 from his singing, his dancing, his caring heart, and imagination. I am your host, Devon Miller, but some of you may know me as Barney Miller 123 ABC from YouTube and or the Barney community. I would first like to start off by saying a very big welcome to the Perfectly Purple Podcast. If you are a huge Barney fan, you are in for a treat with this podcast and today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first episode in the new year of 2018. Wow. Just wow. Okay. Wait, wait. Guess on BBC One Radio? I did not know that. Okay, I did not know that. Okay, I said, wait, 2018? Wait. What happened to Bar- Purple Purple Podcast in 2019? But anyway, let's continue on. Come on. And I have got some exciting things to tell you. But before I do, I gotta give out a purple shout out. You guys know how this works. If you're enjoying this podcast and you love Barney, all you gotta do is hashtag purple shout out. Wherever you listen to this podcast, tell us why do you love Barney? Or what do you think that makes him such a great friend? Today's purple shout out goes out to, and I hope I say this name right, Ayanu Oraki. Ayanu loves Barney because he's funny and he rocks. He's a good friend. Ayanu, if Barney were here, he would say that you're a good friend too. Thanks for the support on this podcast as well. If you love exactly. Barney and you love this podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe. And leave a comment in regards to what you listen to and spread the word to other Barney fans out there. It would be a huge help for those who may not keep up with some Barney news that happened recently. Exactly. Before I keep things moving along, I do want to apologize for this episode coming out late. I've been super busy, but as well, I do try to keep a new episode relatively close to any new Barney news that's clumped up together. So again, I apologize for the gap from the last episode to this one. Please do understand, but as well, this podcast is meant to be special. If I did exactly. this like every Friday, it would be special. So I do like to keep that surprise of, uh, when is the next one coming out? Is there one coming out? I don't know. So, yeah, my apologies again for that gap. Let's keep yeah. this moving along with some celebrity news that has happened recently. There are multiple celebrities that have appeared on Barney Before Us Children. Kyla Pratt, Trevor Morgan, Demi Lovato, Debbie Ryan, Madison Pettis. But the one I'm going to talk about now is someone that is significantly known to be on Barney. You've seen her in Wizards of Waverly Place, Hotel Transylvania. She's a worldwide singer these days. You all know her. It's Selena Gomez. For those of you who may not know, Selena Gomez played the role of Gianna in season 7 and 8 of Barney and Friends. Uh, wow. From the start of Barney, that's when her career started. Now, the reason I bring up Selena Gomez in this episode is because recently, she was featured on Nick Grimshaw's show on BBC One Radio. And one of the segments on the show is seeing if certain celebrities can remember their lyrics. Possibly lyrics that they haven't sung in a while, so of course it was Selena Gomez's time to shine. Selena was confident that she knew the lyrics from all her tracks until host Nick Grimshaw started playing seven of some songs, and that's going to be the complete lyrics. She got yeah. stumped on I Want You to Know, the that's the 2015 collaboration with Zed, and the other song was One and the Same from the Disney Channel movie Princess Protection Program, which was a duet with Demi Lovato and a song I grew up with. But then the host started playing a Barney song, specifically a duet with just Barney and Selena. And what song is played? 
The Idea Song. Wow. I'd like to think of something. Did she remember? Did she not? Well, honestly, surprisingly for me, she did. She actually sung the rest of the song on her own. And wow. She did. Now, when I, when I first watched this video and specifically saw the part with Barney, at first I'm like, okay, if she didn't remember those songs, there was no way she could remember Barney because those songs she sung are more, re like the other songs that she sung were more recent to her career than Barney. I mean, yeah, but then when, but then when I saw that she did remember, I started screaming, screaming with joy. Like, yes, yes, you, you know, this, like, you know, this honestly really shouldn't have surprised me because it proves that no matter what age you are, there's always one Barney song that you have to remember. And it proves that Barney made an impact on her. And I'm honestly so glad she remembered. Honestly, the idea song, not a song that I would consider a memorable song, such like Oh, everyone is special, but hey, it's up there now. The idea song is it's memorable. Yeah. And just a little side note, um, as I was looking up Barney videos on YouTube, there were a surprisingly amount of song there was a surprising amount of songs that I saw people singing along to that I wouldn't expect, like like a cover. Uh, there was one video I saw a group singing If I Looked Under the Sea, one kid was singing rock and roll star and this one girl was actually doing the emotions and singing along with mr moon i was like there are a lot of songs that i never like there were a lot of songs that i never would have expected like a kid honestly to come out and just sing but 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 yeah i just i just wanted to make that little side note also exactly. within that little interview with selena she also said that she does look back on those days fondly and Hey, I would too if I were you. I would too if I were you. But <laughs> even though she was, even like, even though she was made fun of in school for like being on the show, but hey, I would just ignore those bullies. I mean, exactly. Along with Barney, you have made people smile, and that's probably the best thing when being on Barney too. In the interview as well, she said that she did try to have a reunion, but they said that she couldn't be on the show. She wasn't in the right union. Uh. I don't know what that means, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, she wasn't in the right union to have a reunion on the show. But then right afterwards, they started talking about Demi Lovato, and the host stated that Demi said that Barney was hot. And even Selena agreed to that statement. But they're actually talking about the guy inside the costume, not Barney himself. And at that time, the portrayal of the Barney costume was Carrie Stinson. So basically... Yeah, both which now he did... Uh... Uh, Purple Tales podcast, which I'm planning on reacting to the next two right after I'm done with the Mega Spin uh, si the finals episode of season six and these two final the final two videos, which I'll get to that in, in the next episode of Belgium React. So let's continue on, Devon. Lena and Demi think Carrie is hot, and keep in mind these girls were eight. They were eight. So wow, imagine. Man, if I was like in that in my like twenties, what? Yes, that must be weird. I wouldn't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> but at the time, Carrie, uh, I I think Carrie was around thirty-two. I miss about eight. Dang, wow. them two, they were looking at his muscles because keep in mind it's sweating in that costume, and you gotta be fit. Like I'm honestly surprised that they were actually able to view him getting inside the cost costume, but actually, no. Mm mm. I. Mm -mm, I shouldn't be surprised whatsoever because I know that they do a rehearsal with without having the costume on. I do know that. I've seen pictures. Uh, uh, so they pretty much know who's in it. I like, yeah. guess they pretty much know who's inside the costume. Yeah. But overall, when watching Selena in this interview, I was very proud of her yeah. for remembering that song. I'm also glad because it's a song from the 2000s and Wow! Uh, kid over here, if you can tell. <laughs> but at the end of the video, my only thought was, what does Carrie think of Selena and Demi having a crush on him? 
Like, <laughs> if you guys have to hear his reaction, let, let me know. Maybe we could get Carrie on the show, talk about his days and, like, what, what would he think, you know? Anything could happen. Anything could happen. All right. For the next story we have right over here, we are going to go back to a man who I talked about in the first episode of the Perfectly Purple podcast. He's well-known outside the costume of Barney. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about David Joyner. Oh, my. Not too long ago, as I'm recording this, uh, in the first episode of the Perfectly Purple podcast, I talked about David Joyner and the AMA he did, which was phenomenal again, where fans asked some questions about... Of David and his time on Barney or even his time on Hip Hop Harry. But the news I have today is David Joyner runs a tantric sex business. Now I'm going to really really <laughs> let me scroll down. Um performing for the now runs a tantric sex business? I did not know that, but anyway, let's continue on. Read some of the article from Vice who I believe is the one who did the interview directly from David Joyner himself, like the primary interviewers. But, okay, so as stated by Vice, a full session with tantrum message specialist and spiritual healer, David Joyner lasts three to four hours and costs $350. For that price, female clients, only kind he accepts, can accept to receive a ritual bath chakra balancing yeah. and a massage also on the menu cosmic mind-blowing organs mind-blowing organs mm -hmm. okay uh, i thought i'm like am i reading this right what <laughs> anyways uh the latter can be achieved through the massage alone but the goal of a session is to fully release a woman's blocked energy today joiner's tantric massage practice boasts 30 clients or god goddesses as he calls them as he unblocks the energy of two to four women a week he says it's a tad different than his work as a software anal analyst uh, at texas instruments a job he held for six years and landed shortly after graduating from itt technical institute but drinner says his current work in tantra does does share some many so does share many similarities to another job he held from 1991 to 2001, that of Barney, the beloved purple dinosaur on the hit PBS children's show, Barney and Friends. Yeah. Uh, let's go right here. The energy I brought up while in the costume is based on the foundation of Tantra, which is love, he explains. Everything stems, grows, and evolves from love. Even when you have emotionally blocked energy, the best way to remove it is to remove it with love and then replace it with God's divine love. Love heals and allows you to continue to grow. Barney, of course, radiated pure joyful love. It was part of what children, still full of innocence, oh found so appealing to him. And it's what many parents, beaten down to various degrees by the sovereign realities of the world, found, found so cloying. Yeah. Joyner gave expression to that love through his physical portrayal of the exuberant T-Rex during his stint it was mostly actor bob west who gave voice to the character before i got into the barney costume i would pray and ask god to allow his loving divine spirit to flow through me through the costume and let that draw the kids the that energy would always draw them in joiner says children are more connected spiritually than adults a lot of times when i see infants i'm out and i'm at about at the grocery store or whatever they start staring at me i make this joke and you you know who i am joiner says he also uses tantra training to maintain his energy during long days on the set where he wore the hot and times could reach 120 degrees inside of it 70 pound costume for several for several hours and numerous takes for various scenes tantra helped him maintain an abundance of joy during the process, he says. For many in the West, the word Tantra conjures up images of sting engaging in seven-hour marathon sex. Yeah. But the practice has roots in both Buddhism and Hinduism, going back thousands of years and contains many facets. How Joyner speaks about Tantra today won't help up clear any confusion. He's a type of guy prone to spitting out a quote like this. When you go down on a woman orally, it should be just like you're saying grace 
Like blessing the food you're about to receive, no food in the world can compare to goddess nectar because spirit is involved. Before you taste the goddess nectar, give thanks, say grace. I would love women to understand how powerful that energy is. And the, the mission statement on his website, tantraharmony.com, reads, to connecting your mind, body, and spirit together as one in perfect harmony, achieving a higher and more blissful state of awareness to your sexuality. And who are you as a spiritual being? For clients of this higher and more blissful state of awareness is often best achieved through penetrative, ideally unprotected sex, according to Joyner. Oh, Condoms hi. block the energy, he says, and he prefers not to use them. Joyner provides his STDs test results to prospective clients who are asked oh, to disclose any STDs. Let me see. Uh, discussion on... Okay. this year, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to read that just in case, but anyway. Okay, let's continue on. These and a sign consent form prior to their first session. These methods, according to other Tantra coaches, are highly unorthodox. Joyner began his current practice in 2004 and finds clients any number of ways from word of mouth to converting women he's met on Tinder into believers. He sees clients in their homes all over LA from Brentwood to Long Beach to deep in the valley and even out of state. His website contains several goddess testimonials, each more breathless than the last, and his effusive praise of Joyner and the benefits of sessions with him. Joyner says that before or during his initial consultation with a client, if he feels that they're not ready for or can't handle the spiritual experience or are simply looking for a physical release, he will not take them on. And there is another part in this article that says, not all of my sessions have sex or spiritual intimacy. Oh it's my. only in the full sessions when someone is ready to take the sexual energy to a higher level, says Joyner. Because, that, because then it's about understanding that when the lingam and the yani connect, there's a spiritual exchange that takes place not physical pleasure it's not about sex we're trying to we're trying to coerce someone into ha having sex it's about removing emotionally blocked energy joiner discovered tantra and spiritual sexuality in the 1980s at age 20 while training in swedish massage oh which he took up as a way to make extra money while at itt okay. he began connecting the two when while practicing massage on the side of his main gig at ti clients began telling him his touch arose them, he says. He continued deeper into his studies and shared his love of Tantra openly until he was asked to put a lid, of, lid on it upon being cast as Bonnie in 91. According to Joyner, attorneys for the show told him he was not allowed to teach, practice, or talk about Tantra while under contract playing the character. He was told it was a lawsuit mm -hmm. waiting to happen. Still, yeah. he practiced covertly throughout his decade in the purple suit and says his devotion to Tantra remained a secret he'd share with some members of the crew. But all who worked on the show, your mains, could sense a certain energy about him. They knew I was spiritual and that I meditated. I often yeah. shared with the crew that the energy I brought up in the costume is based on the foundation of Tantra. Love, he says. Joyner says he wants to spread the word of Tantra and the power of the, god the goddess energy. He does it now as a Tantra massage specialist. For a decade, he did it across TV screens all over the nation as Barney the Purple Dinosaur. He sees many similarities between the two. I always said it was never an accident that I was meant to do this character, he says. Because a lot of the elements of Barney were a lot of things that I was training in Tantra. Tantra? Now I'm looking back and saying, am I pronouncing this word right? Is it Tantra or Tantra? Oh my. Well, I'm just going to keep saying Tantra. <laughs> uh, there's more quote. There's uh, there is more quotes in here as well. Um, but I didn't want to spend the time reading that whole article. There's also a quote here from Stephen White, one of the writers who worked on Bonnie and Friends, and there's also a quote from Leah Mont Montez, the actress who played Lucy. So if you want to hear about what they have to set up, say about Mr. Joyner, I recommend that you read the full article itself. Yeah, uh, there was nothing negative they said, however. But honestly, when I first saw the story appear, I really didn't care because just by the title it seemed that the media like it seemed that they were trying to make it look negative i remember coming yeah. to school the next day and a friend of mine said hey 
did you see the news about Barney? I said, the sex guru? They said, yeah. I said, okay. And? and like, what? W what do you want me to say about that? Like, I, I guess they were trying to make it look at this. I guess they were trying to make me look at the story oh, as man. something bad. But but me, I don't see what's wrong with it. I mean, it's a man's see. job. So what? He's just trying to spread love at the court. I don't think of David Joyner any differently. Like, this doesn't affect me nor change my mind about what I think of this actor. But if I may read a statement from David Joyner regarding this, and yes, this is for the whole public to see. I'm not his friend on Facebook. And he also posted it publicly on Instagram. Um, he said... I'm sure most of you have seen the articles yeah. that have come out today regarding Tantra. When I was approached to do the interview, I was told the article would capture the spiritual side of Tantra and my spiritual healing practices. To shed a more positive light on the benefits of its ancient practice and teaching to those who don't know much about it. But of course, it didn't come out that way. I truly wish more people would try to see the spiritual side of Tantra and not think it's all about sex. Sometimes people here in the West can be so sad. The milk is spilled now, but know that I am very blessed, and love and light will always rise to the surface. Yeah. Namaste. Man, oh man, Barney and friends have been busy singing and dancing on stage. Oh no, not North America. We haven't seen him since 2011 in the U.S. Well, besides the night before, but, but, but no, 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 no. What I'm actually talking about is Barney has been on stage in Saudi Arabia. Really? If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, the show that's been performing was called Barney Live World Tour A Celebration. Actually, this is something I've wanted to talk about on the show for a while, but it was, it's been going here and there, and there wasn't a moment where it would perform when I would do an episode but that soon changed because it recently did perform in Yanbu from February 22nd to February 24th of this year, 2018. And later performed in Jazan from March 1st to the 3rd of this year. But yeah, I really wanted to talk about this show on this podcast because I'm not sure if any of you besides the people in Saudi Arabia have even heard of this show. But first off... What I have to say about this show is, wow, like, <laughs> I don't know where to start. I, I don't know where to start. Uh, well, I guess I'll start, I'll start where it first performed. If you guys don't know, this show first opened on July 23rd, 2015 in the Western region, United Arab Emirates. This show was originally, I think, directed by Troy Sussman. I don't know if he still does it or not. Like, if he does, still does direct the show. But basically, uh, Barney Live World Tour Celebration is about Riff. Uh, he has sent Barney a special package in the mail, a beautiful globe of the world. Barney, BJ, and Baby Bop must use the globe and follow the clues to find Cousin Riff and a list of very special items. As Barney and his friends travel to France, Japan, India, China, and Mexico, they have a terrific time learning about language and culture in each new country. And honestly, wow. that synopsis pretty much covers everything. Now, on paper, this show sounds, it sounds uh, okay to me, you know? Sounds like it's been there, done that, in a way, just by home videos and... That whole season 13 we've got, which was honestly one of my favorites, by the way. I love that season. But the live show itself isn't necessarily all bad. The writing of it is very simple. Kind of, It kind of goes back to Gen 1, to like the Gen 1 writing in a way. It's simple, easy to understand. And surprisingly, some old songs have returned. Now, before I get to what I'm gonna say next. I'm gonna say this. What I admire about this show is that they use songs from all generations and not just songs from a particular point in time. Yeah. Please tell me you guys know what I mean. Like, <laughs> they have the Pinata song, which was only in season one. They have Up Is- Yeah, Pinata song, yeah. 
which I talk about in the OMX Go Barney and Friends vlogs episode. You know, if you had to check it out, you may, you, you, yeah, you may, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, just, yeah, and especially that, uh, salsa chip with the dip part. It was so hilarious to me to figure out it's so scary as crap right now as a kid. But now I don't want, now it's so hilarious to see that. You be doing that, 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 that. <laughs> and it was so hilarious. I'm like, oh my god. But hey, let's continue on. Up and Down is Down, which was from Gen 3. Together, Together, which is only from Gen 4. And then a variation of Wheelie's Got a Way to Go, which is now called in this show, Magic Carpet is a Way to Go, which is from Gen 2. But the, mu the music, I feel, is pretty good. So props to Andrew Kroner for being the music director of this show. I now oh yeah, not to um, Joe Phillips because he was a he was originally gonna be a co musical director at the time, but he's not anymore. So if he's watching this uh, episode of Electrum, yeah, it's right now. So there you go, and that continue. I've said what I admired. Now for sadly, I have to talk about the bad stuff. First off. This show would be unacceptable if it were to come in a major place here in the U.S. Really? The transitions are just bad. There is parts in the show... It's not in the U.S. Yeah, exactly. Because I wanted to live in the U.S. I wanted to have Barney in my country, you know? I mean, it's bad. You know? Her baby bop acts as if she's flying away... But she's basically walking. The same with the dinosaurs when they just walk off stage. There's no curtain n or anything. It's it's just awful. The background is basically a digital screen. But the worst thing is the voices of this show are just awful. The yeah. only good voice in here is Rip, who sounds like his early season 10 episodes. Be yeah, probably because they have... Well, back then, Bob West, uh, as originally a voice of Barney, and then Dean Went currently voiced Barney, and now this crap! What happened here? But anyway, let's continue on. Bebop and BJ, I don't even know, but Barney's voice just sounds like a bad fan impression, and it's just terrible. I've heard other people and other fans who can do a better job, I... I don't even know what to call this voice. Like, I really wish they would have found someone else to capture the spirit, the tone of Barney, because that ain't it. That is not it. Like, the person doing it doesn't really sound like he cares about his job, honestly. That's the, honestly the same thing about the people in the costume. Like, there's this part in the show when they're doing the can-can, and that performance I saw of that... Like, the person inside of Riff didn't care what he was doing whatsoever. It's like, hey, it's like, hey, I'm doing the can-can. Hey, <laughs> that's my job. Uh, oh, forget this. Can I go home, please? <laughs> oh, I hate my life. The guy inside the Barney costume during the December performance of the show was so stiff. Like, there's not really any jumps, anything like that, like... You know how Barney does the 360s and stuff like that? He's always so jumpy, so jolly. Like, that's who Barney is. But I really wish this person even got... Like, I, I really wish I knew if this person got strained or not. Because I honestly, I'm honestly guessing that they didn't tell this dude his job on how to be the character. He probably, he probably just took the job for the money. And, you know, when watching this show, it honestly made me wonder if these kids even realized... That the voices change, or yeah. even the parents realize, like they like realize the voices change. Like, did they even complain? Probably not. And you know why? Because at the end of the day, it's Barney. It's Barney. It's Barney, and that's something else I have to say as well. I apologize for that rant, but if someone asked me if I would watch the show again, you know what I would tell them? Yes. I actually would watch this show. In fact, I had watched this show more than twice. You know why? Because it's Barney. Exactly. And that's something that I feel fans have to get over with still. Yes, the voice is terrible, but officially, that's still Barney. And I don't know why, despite all these flaws, I can't help but still be in love with the show. 
Is it in my top five favorite live shows? No. Is it the best Barney live show? No. But it's not the worst, honestly. Look, I've seen fans say, I hate the Barney with Dean Wynn. Bring back Bob West. Bring back Bob West. No, I, I like Dean, and Tim and Duncan are pretty trash. Yeah, especially because that Bob West is awesome. Bring back Bob West thing, because I'm a... I'm a, the first person who said bring back Bob West when first when season seven first aired, and that's because I do not like the way uh, Dean Went voiced originally, and then I decided that screw it, Dean Went is the the right voice. So I'm like, okay, this is not looking good. So Bob West is awesome. So there you go. If he, if but Dean Went screwed up saying things like, can you do this? Well, I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. It doesn't work that way. But anyway, let's continue on. But something, something I really have to say on this podcast is that you can't look at Barney at what he is now. You can't look at Barney by the different eras. You can't look at 80s Barney, 90s Barney, 2000s, or the 2010s Barney. Yeah. You look at Barney like he's never changed. He never changed. You can't say, okay... I stopped watching Barney because he's a different voice, you know, but you still like Barney, don't you? Yeah. It's still the same lovable, huggable dinosaur you fell in love with. Mm. And that's why I can't really get mad or honestly, like, deep down inside, rage with fury at this live show. If you love Bob West, imagine it's Bob West still as the voice, just trying it with a different tone. I mean... Imagining is what Barney stands for. Like Barney has said before, we change a little with each new day. Bob's voice and Dean's voice have evolved. I mean, yes, I have preferences on my favorite costume, but as a whole, it's Barney. And, like, I have preference in, on who my favorite voice is, but at the end of the day, you know what? It's still Barney. How can I get raged at this show? Don't, don't raid with so much hatred deep down inside as a whole. Mm. I'm glad that they're at least trying a brand new live show. And at least exactly. they're giving thought onto our purple friend. Like, because we haven't gotten anything, like, you know, with, in terms of, like, new episodes or something. So I'm glad they're at least doing something new with Barney. And I hope you guys, I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say here, too. But if any of you have seen the show live or recorded... What are your thoughts on it? Are you happy about the new live show? Let us know. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now, with this next announcement that I'm about to share, I'm pretty sure it will excite any fan of Barney. It has been so long since we've seen Barney in the stores. And I'm not just talking about new home videos or new DVDs because we've been getting those episode compilations each year. And actually, actually come to think of it, there hasn't been any announcement or anything yet regarding a new home video this year as I'm recording. Do, do any of you, like, do any of you think a new home video will happen this year? Let us know. But guys, Fisher Price is producing new Barney toys. Oh, and God. so far, they're exclusively at Target at this moment. And, oh, M G, these toys are actually selling out fast. Like, wow! This this has been the first set of toys released in stores, U.S. wise since 2012, 2012. Like, can you believe that, guys? Yeah. Wow. And you know what's weird is, I'm looking back at my childhood right now. I don't remember seeing a single Barney toy in store. I'm not gonna lie, because maybe maybe because I was so young and they stopped carrying toys as I grew up, like as I get like into the 2010 decade, like I don't remember seeing any toys in Walmart or Toys R Us whatsoever. Maybe because I would always go to the VHS and DVD section, but but yeah, the first set of toys uh, were released in January of this year, and they just keep on coming. The first set of toys were the Barney Buddies, Speak and Sing Jumble Barney, and the I Love You Barney and Baby Bop toys. Yeah. 
in the Barney Buddy set, uh, those featured Barney, Baby Bop, and BJ. And basically, they're just small, cuddly plush toys. Speak and Sing Jumbo Barney is a big jumbo plush toy. Uh, when Barney sort of squeeze, he says 19 phrases, sings I love you, and one of the phrases are, I'm glad you came to play. You give great hugs. No, you know, hold on, let me, I'm going to do this with my Barney voice, I don't care. But, uh, one of the phrases was, uh, I'm glad you came to play. You give great hugs. Terrific. Please give me a hug. And of course, with the I Love You Barney and Baby Love toys, uh, it's kind of what it sounds like. They sing the song, I Love You. Now, before I move on to the next set of toys, I have to give my thoughts on these ones. First of all, I'm really disappointed with the fact that Riff was not included with the Barney Buddies. I feel that Riff, Riff isn't that new at this point, I feel. He's been around for 10 years now, so introducing him shouldn't really be a problem. I mean, yes, he came in the show late, but if you're born, like, at, at the most 2002, then you would have heard of him. I'm not a child anymore, and I know who he is, and a couple of my friends know who he is, but... I guess before 2002, those children are now parents, so I guess mm. they would be a little confused on who Riff is. I guess that I guess they want to pay an homage like the 90s in a way. Yeah. But as well, something else that's pretty big with these toys is that they have brand new voice actors. Yes. No, it's not the ones from Barney Live World Tour Celebration. Yeah. Uh, Dean Wendt is replaced by someone brand new as well as Julie Johnson because in the li in the I Love You toys and the Jumbo Barney, they are not the same. Now, honestly, when I first heard this voice, I was honestly mixed. Barney's voice sounded like a mix of Dean, Dean Wendt, and Bob West. And Baby Bob's voice, I... You know, I honestly don't mind, surprisingly, but her voice reminded me, like, of an old grandma and, for some reason, the new voice of Junior Asparagus and Veggie Tales in the house. But as I kept listening to Barney, the voice was leaning a little bit more towards Dean. Now, that was for the singing dolls, but when it spoke, it sounded different to me. Now, that was for the singing dolls, but when it spoke, it sounded different to me. Like, when it talked... It sounded like a mix of Dean Went and Tim Dever with a hint of Bob West. It was weird, but I swear I hear two different people when this doll sings and talks. It's probably the same person. That's just my ears. I swear I hear two different people. Yeah. Uh, like, I feel like one is higher than one is lower. It's like kind of like that Duncan and Tim thing, but I'm not sure. But that's just what I hear. I really want to hear what bj sounds like now oh my oh man i really want to hear bj now those were the january release toys now let us move on to what came out in february and we only had one toy released in that month and it was a rebooted version of barney's best manners phone and speaking of the party, you'll need to call your parents to ask permission to go. Barney's right. Yeah, he is. Right to the phone. Come on. Hey, oh, 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 like the farmer and his son. You can't agree, so nobody is getting what they want. Hey, guys, hmm? here's something in the book that'll help. Oh. Listen. Okay. <laughs> when one thing is wanted by two or more, that's what taking turns is for. Exactly. Right. If you just take turns, everyone can call. Oh, give it a try. Oh, we take turns. Oh, we take turns. When we play with toys. Because that's what's right. Because that's what's right. For girls and boys. For girls and boys. So we take turns when we play with toys. Because that's what's right. For girls and boys. So we take turns. When we play with toys. Well, that's the idea. 
It's different, but it retains some of the lines from the 2002 version. Of course, Dean's voice is replaced with this new voice actor, and when Barney talks, his mouth does light up, but the design is, like, pretty much a, pretty much the same. The only yeah. difference, like, the toy itself is pretty much the same. The only difference is the new art style on the phone, which I'm really, like, I'm not a huge, huge fan of. I don't mind, I'm just not a huge, huge fan on it. I prefer the, like, I prefer the cartoon designs before 2006, honestly. I still, like, I still wish they would make Riffin that style. I, I want to see what he looks like, because I don't know, like, there are differences compared with them, and now, like, Barney's feet and BJ's eyes, but, <laughs> so sorry, I, like, I had to, I went on the there. But, yeah, it's the 2006 cartoon design they used, of on that on that phone i think with this version of the phone they include more melodies like indoor outdoor voices everyone is special uh you know etc but it's still a pretty cool toy my only mm -hmm. criticism i have for this honestly is that there's no mention of riff when you like oh, when you God. press the button barney will answer and say i'm, I'm gonna do my barney voice hello Oh, I'm sorry. BJ's not here right now. He's flying a kite. I'll tell BJ you called. Or he'll say, I'm sorry. Baby Bob's not here right now. She's outside with BJ. Talk to you soon. It, that bugs me because there is no mention of Riff. Yes, Riff is still relatively new in the series, but it's been over 10 years, like I said. Like, come on. People should know who Riff is. Exactly. Yeah, again, there hasn't been much new Barney content to say, Hey, I'm Rip. I've been on the show a while. You know what I mean? But yeah. honestly, they could have said, I'm sorry, Rip is not here right now. He's next door making music. I'll tell Rip you called. But I do understand in a way, I guess they want to try and go in the direction of the before Rip times. Oh, you know what would be really cool? What if this they made an updated version of this toy instead of like of of, of <laughs> can't talk can't talk um but instead of like in this day and age we're all about technology why not have this phone translate into a cell phone? Now I know what you're thinking. Some of you fans are like, wait, they already have a cell phone. Yeah, they have the Barney musical cell phone, which was like. The late 2000s. No, I'm talking about like a touchscreen Barney cell phone. Because if Sesame Street can have, can update Elmo's world and include a, a cell phone, why not uh, update uh, something into something more modern? That would exactly. uh, be with the child. So, you know, they're not like, hey, what's this? Some like, oh, they recognize it. Hey, that's a cell phone. That's something that adults use. Then, then like, you know, the kids can play pretend. They're like, taking a phone call you're like hello is this barney hi you know that would be really cool so they, mattel if you're listening make us make a cell phone like a touchscreen cell phone you know like what everyone has exactly that would be really cool what do you guys think you guys do you think they should do that let us know yeah that's that's what we got in february that's the only toy we've got and finally there are more new barney toys on the way as of now keep your eyes peeled for the Barney career toys and basically what these toys are is that kids can now join Barney and try on different career hats to become a chef, a police officer, or a train conductor. Oh, I've been looking for a hat for my magic back. <laughs> hey, who turned out the lights? <laughs> I guess this one won't work. Mm -hmm. Here, try this one. <laughs> that might work. <laughs> now that's better. <laughs> Dressing up is so much fun. When you put on a costume, you can become anyone. Soft Barney figures come in 12 inches plush, delightfully costumed, and so they can play out their favorite career with their favorite dinosaur. Your child can be a chef and cook up some fun, or become a train conductor and be the boss of the rail, or a police officer to protect and serve. Always with Barney, the best partner on the job, each sold separately, subject to availability. That, that's, that's, and that's actually a pretty good idea, promoting pretend play with Barney. I like 
like it. I see you. you like it. I yeah. see you. <laughs> but the plush toys are pretty adorable to look at, and I, I really want one. The toy, the toys I'm most interested in and must have is the Jumbo Barney. And I would get, and I, I would also get one of the career Barneys, maybe the Chef. But let, let us know what toys are you interested in getting, or which toys have you already gotten? Yeah. What is your opinion of the toys? You love them or not? Uh, let us know and be on the lookout for more Barney toys coming this spring. But one more thing I forgot to mention about um these toys is. They are selling like hotcakes. I can't oh! not. Like, guys, we're entering into a whole new Barney mania. I can tell you that right now. If this reboot ever, like, comes out pretty soon, we feel like kids will just... It'll be, like, another 90s again. You know? It'll be another 90s where kids, they can't go anywhere without Barney. Yeah. Speaking of which, they, yeah, I'll be the Dark and Naughties again with I see Teletubby Reboot, which is awesome. And of course, I see, uh, um, some, the 50 Seasons of Sesame Street. Why not Barney? Why not a Reboot of Big Comfy Couch? Why not that? Because already, they, yeah, they're coming out with the two shows, like, Snickle Fritz and, uh, Molly Goes to Clowner Garden. So, why not that? Continue on. Like, like, even my friends have said this. Like, they're selling like hotcakes. We're going into another Barney Mania. Yeah, and I'm exactly. I'm actually proud about that. I'm glad about that. Are, like, are any of you... Of course you guys have to be glad about that. Yeah. But, yeah, but I kid you not, guys. Like, when I say they're selling, they are selling fast. And se they're like, oh my god. They'll, like, okay, you know how, like, how these toys are, like, exclusively for Target, like... That's where they're meant to be sold at. I kid you not, I've gone to the Target website and and some of my friends have too. They like the toys, like uh well, which one? The I Love You Barney. If you click on that, you man, stand up. that toy's gonna say it's unavailable. And you know why? It's because it's <laughs> sold out. Wow. <laughs> oh my god, like like I'm gonna be honest, I I didn't expect it, like, I knew, like, these toys would sell, mm -hmm. but I didn't expect it, like, to sell out, like, and, like, quick as a wink. Like, oh my god. Like, and, uh, but yeah, these toys are selling out fast. And the last time I even went to Target, there was no Barney whatsoever. God. I didn't see no Barney, no BJ or Baby Bob, nothing. Nothing, Barney. I don't know if they sold out or if it just wasn't, if Barney, if like they, this target wasn't selling any, but overall, point is, we're entering into a new Barney mania. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a super de duper ride. So hold on, guys. Like, we, we like I said, uh, like these toys, I'm just like so excited, like right now, my god. But yeah. Coming soon, we're getting more Barney toys, and we're entering into a new Barney mania. Are you excited? I'm excited. I, I am. This is for that 2019 for me, because... Or 2020 for me, because... Even though 2020s are the time for me to get Barney toys. I don't know. We'll see, because, you know... I, for now, I just want to get my Amazon list, because I'm not going to get to the showing you this, because that's personal information. But anyway, let's continue on. It's something I also want to mention is where Barney episodes are officially available for viewing. Wow. Barney, as I know of, is not airing on public broadcasting stations in the U.S. as of now. My station stopped airing the show in 2015. Please support the Barney franchise. If you're not interested in buying them on DVD, that's cool. Watch them on digital. Of course you know Barney is on iTunes, Google Play, Vudu, Hulu, etc but also please watch the episodes of seasons 8 through 13 on amazon instead of on youtube and also go check out kikariki it's a company under nine story media group and over on that digital yeah. channel you're able to watch the 14th season of barney which is pretty cool because yeah. with that season it's a little rare 
despite it being season 10 and 11 episodes, and it's in full HD, so I highly recommend that you guys check out that channel over there. Well, yeah. Yeah, that'll, that'll give me more time to make BNF vlog seasons 8 through 10 to 13 to make a vlog series out of it. As for 14, yeah, we'll see what happens to make BNF vlog season 14 to get it to finish off my BNF vlog series. Now I can do the BNF vlog series out of the way. So there you go in that, uh, Deb Day Bonk. Let's continue on. Just to support Barney. Oh, and also, this is a little weird thing, but for some reason, I feel that if we ever get the reboot, that's where the show might go. Kikariki. I'm not confirming this. That's just my prediction of what could happen, honestly, since that channel is Mind Story Media Group owned. But, yes, please support the Barney franchise. As I know of, of Barney's, well, as I said, Barney is not airing on any PBS stations, public broadcasting stations in the U.S. as of now. Because well, I've talked to my PBS station before, and they said Barney doesn't air on PBS anymore, like, the, the rights have expired. So that's why I'm telling you guys, please go watch Barney anywhere you can besides YouTube, because Barney needs the support you can get if you want Barney to, like, come back just full of joy and delighting kids again. So I highly recommend you guys go over to Amazon, check out seasons 8 through 13, and also on Amazon, check out the 14th season of Barney on Kikiriki. Anyway. And there you have it. I want to say a huge thank you for you guys, the listeners who listen to this episode of the Perfectly Purple Podcast. I hope you guys will tune in next time for more terrific Barney moments to share. If you guys want more Barney, then go online to Barney.com for more terrific fun. As well, go on like Barney's official American, Latin American, and Brazil Facebook pages. Also subscribe to the official Barney YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash HitBarney. On top of that, also subscribe to the Latin American and Brazil channels. Again, thank you guys so much for listening, and have a terrific, perfectly purple day. and more what do i think about this episode it was amazing so far this episode went to be a success and so much more anyways that wraps up belgium riyadh's episode 331 i hope you enjoy it stay tuned for the next one which is going to be um elgin riyadh's episode 30, 332 the mega spin uh, final two episodes of the season uh six Episodes um, 11 and 12, but I'm also going to react to the, the final two episodes from Alex Paris. And Alex, we watch this for you, but I'm also going to react to the next two episodes coming up. But until next time, this is Jerry Goodbye, Peace out, baby. We can watch reacts with you guys very soon. But it's been Jeff Wilson out. See ya. time I failed to really understand it. I never sought to meet the maker of reality.